In this video, we're going to look at complex loci using arguments of complex numbers instead of moduli, which we've done in the previous videos. Well, let's look first of all at three simple examples. If I want the locus of all points z, which satisfy firstly, arg z is pi by three. Well, just think for a moment, what shape is that going to be? Arg z is pi by 3. We want z to have an argument of pi by 3. It can be anywhere up there if this angle at the bottom is pi by 3. Notice it's only half line. If you come down here, then the argument of any point here is going to be minus 2 pi by 3. So let's draw that. Okay, there it is. The angle at the bottom would be pi by three. Okay, let's move on to the second one. In this case, we've got z minus two i. And this is when I like to go back to the idea of complex numbers and vectors being very, very closely connected. This is the vector from 2i to z, from 2i to z, or the complex number from 2i to z. So we're starting at 2i, and we're going to z. And the argument has to be 3 pi by 4. So we must be somewhere up there. If we're starting at 2i, going to z, and the argument is 3 pi by 4. OK, let's draw that. And there we are. Anywhere on that half line, starting at 2i, with an argument of 3 pi by 4. Well, you should be getting the hang of this. The last one isn't particularly difficult. If I want to put the last one into a format which I can cope with, I should really be looking at something like this. Arg z minus minus 2 minus 2i equals minus pi by 4. Having written it like that, I can now think of the vector starting at minus 2 minus 2 and going down at an angle of or an argument of minus pi by 4. Let's just give ourselves a little bit more screen. And let's draw that one. And here it is, starting at minus 2, minus 2, and an argument of minus pi by 4. So each of these will form a half line. And the equation will give you the starting point. Now let's look at something just a little bit more complicated. Right, if we look at this one, we now have the argument of z minus 5 divided by z minus 1, which is, of course, a complex number, equals pi by 6. Well, the first thing we have to remember is that if we divide two complex numbers, we subtract their arguments. If I have something like r1 e to the i theta 1 divided by r2 e to the i theta 2, that's r1 over r2 e to the i theta 1 minus theta 2. If I divide my two complex numbers, then I subtract the arguments. Just trying to get rid of them. Cut. So, the first thing we need to do with this is to rewrite it that the argument of z minus 5, subtract the argument of z minus 1, and that is pi by 6. So we now have two vectors that we're looking at. We're looking at the vector from 1 to z, wherever z is, and the vector from 5 to z, wherever z is. So let's just take a point in the middle of the diagram 
and let's look at these two. A rough diagram will be enough for the moment. Let's take a point Z there. Then Z minus 1 will be the line, the vector from 1 to Z. And Z minus 5 will be the vector, the line from Z to 5. That one is a little bit less good. Let's see if I can make it look better. That's better. Right. Sorry about the scraping. What are we looking at? We're looking at the argument of Z minus 5. The argument of Z minus 5, the vector from 5 to Z, is going to be this angle at the bottom here. And the argument of Z minus 1 is the vector from 1 to Z is going to be the angle there. So let's call those A and B. And I'm going to put down an angle C. I know that B plus C plus the third angle makes 180. I know that A plus the third angle makes 180. So I know that A is equal to B plus C. In particular, if A is B plus C, then A minus B is equal to C. A is the argument of Z minus 5. B is the argument of Z minus 1. That equals C, so C must be pi by 6. So from this rather rough diagram, we are now saying that wherever we put Z, we must have pi by 6. Okay, that's probably a bit bigger than pi by 6, but this is only a rough diagram. Now you should start thinking back to your circle theory. I'm starting with two fixed points, 1 and 5. And I'm taking a point Z, and the angle is always pi by 6. Always pi by 6. What does that suggest to you? What should it suggest to you? Surely we've got angles in the same segment. Can you remember that theorem? OK, let's tidy this up and draw a rather better diagram. I've drawn three possible positions for you. Z1, pi by 6. Z2, pi by 6. And Z3, pi by 6. And in each case, the argument of Z minus 5, that's the bigger angle, minus the argument of Z minus 1 is equal to the angle at the top. Same is true if I look at the green lines and if I look at the blue lines. A large angle A in the blue line, a smaller angle B. So when you have something like this, you should be looking at the two endpoints, 1 and 5, and you should be looking at the arc of a circle. Going back to your theory for IGCSE on angles in a circle. I hope that one or two of you are asking what happens below? Do we get the same thing down the bottom? It's a natural question to ask. I've drawn just one position of Z for you on an equivalent circle below the x-axis. Let's have a look at this now. The argument of Z4 minus 5 is minus that angle A. And Z4 minus 1 is minus that angle B. So in this case, minus A is the larger negative number. Subtract the smaller negative number you have a negative number. Arg Z minus 5 
minus argz minus one is negative on the dotted circle. And so any point on the dotted circle will satisfy the equation argz minus five divided by z minus one is minus five by six. And on the solid circle, you will always have arg z minus five over z minus one is plus pi by six. When doing these questions, one side of your initial line will be plus the angle, whatever it is. The other side will be minus whatever it is. Don't just think above and below. If I was to write this as arg z minus one over z minus five is pi by six, I would get the bottom circle. So you must realize that you're going to get the arc of a circle, angles in the same segment. You must realize that there are two possibilities and then you just have to check which one you want. You want the one which gives you the positive angle, not the negative. So, when faced with a problem of this kind, decide where your initial line is, the chord from which the angles are going to be formed. Secondly, consider two circular arcs, either side of your chord, your initial line. And thirdly, decide which arc you want.